Hello and welcome to another Excel 2010 tutorial. Today in this advanced level series I'm going to look at using array formulas and functions. You might wonder why you'd want to use one uh, and there are several reasons that uh, are quite compelling. Array formulas and functions appear all the way through Excel's automatically calculated functions. We'll look at one in a minute uh, using the trend function, uh, but they also appear in things like data tables. All kinds of built-in functions in Excel use uh, arrays in order to display the data. Uh, the other thing is that they allow you to do far more flexible calculations they're also much smaller so when you use an array you can actually use a lot less of the real estate of the spreadsheet if you're using an array you can also save time one of the things that you must remember when you're using an array function is that you can enter them like any other function uh, but the one difference is that you have to have curly braces either end of the function and the way you enter those is by using the combination of control shift and the enter keys uh, you can't type them in you must use control shift and enter in order to complete the function that's why quite often you'll see the array functions referred to as a CSE function function. So let's have a look and see one in practice. Now in order to demonstrate using an array function I'm going to use a little spreadsheet that I've got open here. It's a very simple example but I'm just going to calculate the total for a number of units multiplied by a price. I've actually got the data saved and so I'm just going to go to uh, my data spreadsheet and copy the numbers of units okay and then I'm going to paste that into the values here. There's six for the first six months of the year so I'll paste those in and I've got a price for each one as well and they are also held in my data spreadsheet so I'm going to copy those cells and once again I'm going to paste them in there. Now I want to multiply uh, the number of units by the price uh, in each case so I'll just simply uh, put an equals sign in and then choose the number of units in cell A2 multiplied by the price in B2 and I'm now going to hit enter and then the calculation is going to replicate down to the other cells by double clicking the fill handle and when I've got the total for each of the numbers of units I'm now going to use a keyboard shortcut alt and equals to calculate the total for the whole lot. Okay it's not very long but um, I'm now going to show you how we could use an array function to do exactly the same job. So instead of calculating each one in turn what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click in the cell that I've got the total uh, formatting applied to and this time I'm going to use a sum function so I'm clicking in the formula bar I'm going to go across and I'm going to insert an auto sum function in there and instead of leaving the default uh, reference in there for C8 I'm going to take all the units and I'm then going to multiply them by all the prices you see I'm selecting each one in turn so I've now got A2 to A7 times B2 to B7 and in order to enter this as an array function I'm going to hold down shift and control and hit enter and as you can see Excel then produces the identical answer to doing it the long way round. In the first case we had a simple sum function adding up each of the totals in the second case I've used an array function to do the same thing Thing, but can you see that we have a curly brace at the start and at the end of this formula and Excel has put those in by itself. Now I'm going to demonstrate this a little bit further to show you how Excel uses this automatically and we're going to do this with a trend function. So I'll go over to the trend sheet and in here you can see that I've got uh, six months of the year at the top and then the second six months of the year uh, July through to December in the bottom half of the worksheet. And I've got figures in here for sales and these I have copied in from another 
uh, spreadsheet. So if you download this spreadsheet for yourself, you'll see that uh, those figures are held in the data two sheet. Now I've already copied them in here and what I'm going to get Excel to do is to predict what our sales would be in the second half of the year based on our sales in the first half of the year uh, and I'm going to do this by using a trend function. Now the trend function is an array and so in order to enter it I have to select all the cells that I want populated at the start of the function. Now having selected them I'm now going to click in the formula bar and type in an equal sign and then the name of the function I want is trend so I'm just going to start typing TRE and up pops trend. I'll use the tab key to enter that uh, function and then in the tooltip I can see first of all Excel wants me to tell it what my known Y values are. Well I've got those in here. Here are my Y values for sales. Uh, it's quite useful to get into this keyboard shortcut for selecting things like this and that's to hold the shift key and the control key and hit the down arrow and that way you'll automatically get Excel to copy that cell reference for you. We now need to enter a comma to separate the arguments. As soon as I do that we move on to the next uh, piece of the tooltip which is the known X's. Our known X's in here are the first six months of the year. So once again I'm going to do shift control and down to enter those and then put in another comma and now we want our new X's so this is what Excel is going to base its new predictions on once again these are already in here they're the months 7 through 12 I'm going to close the bracket or the parenthesis at the end so you can now see my function in the formula bar trend B2 to B7 comma A2 to A7 comma a10 to A15 and I'm now going to hold shift control and press the enter key to get Excel to enter all of those cells individually like that. Now this trend function as you can see uh, automatically once again has the curly braces inserted at the beginning and at the end of the function uh, and you can see this is a rough and ready prediction of what Excel imagines we'll be doing in the second half of the year based on the sales we made in the first half of the year. Okay so that's a brief introduction to using array formulae and functions in Excel and obviously I'm using 2010 here but this will work equally well in 2003 and 2007. So that winds up this uh, particular tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you found it useful and I'll see you on the next tutorial.